In Norse mythology, Freya is frequently referred to as the goddess of beauty, although her true purpose is far more nuanced than that. Find out Freya's secrets and how well she kept them in the following video. Freya, spelled in Old Norse as Freya, was a beautiful and alluring goddess in Norse mythology. Associated with fertility and femininity, later writers sometimes portrayed her as a type of femme fatale or immoral harlot. The Norse people, however, saw Freya in a much different light. While her beauty was treasured, it was not the most important aspect of her role. Freya was a goddess of magic and fate. Her knowledge was at least equal to that of Odin. But she never revealed her secrets, or tried to change events that she knew were inevitable. Her power over fate also made her Odin's rival as a host of the dead. While Valhalla is the famous afterlife of Viking warriors, Freya's home actually received a better selection of honoured fighters. The early myths of the Norse gods described them as belonging to two distinct pantheons. The Aesir was usually thought of as more warlike, while the Vanir were depicted as gods of fertility and wisdom. Freya was born among the Vanir gods. Her father was their leader, Njord. She also had a twin brother. Freya and Freya were often paired together in their images and myths. The Aesir and Vanir went to war with one another. The conflict is not detailed in surviving myths, but the aftermath is well attested. Although the Aesir were warriors, the Vanir did significant damage to Asgard, the home of the Aesir. It is often believed that they used their knowledge of magic in place of strength of arms. The war reached a stalemate, with both sides having suffered damaging losses. The two groups convened to discuss the possibility of brokering peace. As part of the truce, the two groups of gods exchanged members. Njord, the wealthiest of the Vanir, moved to Asgard and was adopted into the Aesir. Although they were not named as part of the exchange, Freya and Freya joined him as well. Although they were still gods of the Vanir, their choice to join their father made them honorary members of the Aesir pantheon as well. While the Aesir and Vanir were supposedly made equal in the agreement, the Aesir are much more prominent in mythology. Although evidence exists that the Vanir may have been widely revered, poets chose to highlight the Aesir gods in their stories. Freya and her family members are the only Vanir gods to play significant roles in the surviving Norse myths. The Norse believed in many different kinds of magic. The type that appears the most frequently in the remaining myths is Seder. Seder was a type of magic that centred around fate. Simple spells and potions could change fate in minor ways, such as causing a person to fall in love or sleep through an important event. The more powerful practitioners of Seder could use their magic to truly understand and influence the workings of fate. Entering a trance-like state, they could peer between realms to see the complex web of threads that represented the events of each person's life. These magic users could interpret these threads to make prophecies about the future or learn truths about the past. A few were even powerful enough to slightly move the threads to make minor changes to fate. Freya was considered to be a master of these magical arts. It was said that the Aesir had no knowledge of Seder until Freya joined them and began to teach her skills. Odin quickly adopted this new magic and became an accomplished Seder user. Many of his myths highlight his search for new magical knowledge, such as the secrets of the runes or forgotten incantations. Some claimed, however, that Freya's power was still stronger than Odin's. Although he became exceptionally powerful, his skill never quite matched Freya's own. Odin also had to make great sacrifices to learn his art. Freya seemed to come by her powers naturally. Even the gods, however, had little knowledge of the depths of Freya's abilities. Unlike Odin, she rarely shared what she knew. Many myths centre on the gods' attempt to change fate and avoid Ragnarok. They tried, for example, to prevent Baldur's death first by making him immune from harm, then, when that actually led to his death, by bringing him back from the realm of hell. As a natural user of Seder, however, Freya would have understood that such a fate was unavoidable. Telling the other gods what she knew would only hasten the inevitable as they tried to change destiny. Freya was associated with fate in more than just her magical knowledge, however. She was also a figure in the realm of death. The Norse afterlife was not generally based on a person's virtue or faith. Instead, the manner in which a person died determined where they went in death. Most people went to hell, the realm ruled by Loki's skeletal daughter of the same name. This was a cold and bleak place. Those who died in battle, however, earned a better version in the next life. They joined the gods in Asgard. 
The most well-known place of the afterlife in Norse mythology is called Valhalla, home to Odin. Numerous sources describe its never-ending feasts, ongoing battles and scope of grandeur. Her presence on the battlefield has led many to interpret Freya as the leader of the Valkyries, the group of goddesses who carried fallen warriors to Asgard. Freya's prominence on the battlefield has led many to believe that she served a similar role as the commander of the Valkyries. Because she got the first pick of the warriors, she would be the one to give the minor goddesses their orders. The role emphasizes Freya's position as a goddess of fate and magic. Knowing each man's fate, she would be able to foretell how each would die in battle. As with her knowledge of Ragnarok, however, Freya differed in that she never disclosed the extent of her foresight. Some later stories reimagined the role of Folkvanger, Freya's home in Asgard. Rather than being the place the most honoured warriors went, it was thought of as a place where those who died well but outside of battle went. While hell remained for those with inglorious deaths, Folkvanger became the destination for those who did not fight. Women who died in childbirth or those who died for an honourable cause, for example, were welcomed by Freya. This view was popular, but likely foreign to the Norse people. It was almost certainly a later development based on similar views from other European cultures. Some of Freya's myths centre around her most prized possessions. Items were important in Norse and Germanic legends. Swords, instruments, jewellery and even pots were given names if they were of particular importance. They were also imbued with powerful magic. Freya owned several such items, which played a prominent role in some of her stories. These included the falcon cloak. Freya's feathered cloak gave the power of flight to whoever wore it. While she used it, she also lent it to Thor and others when they needed to leave quickly. Brisingarmen. Her gold torque, a neck band symbolizing power and wealth, was arguably Freya's most valued possession. Some myths claimed that it enhanced the wearer's beauty, and Freya guarded it jealously against possible thieves. Hildesfini Both Freya and her brother were associated with swine. Her pig was a close companion. In one story, she transformed a man into Hildesfini, so she could take him to see a prophetess without anyone knowing. The Cat Chariot Many gods had unique steeds. Freya's chariot was pulled by two black or grey cats animals often associated with magic. As a goddess associated with love and fertility, Freya's mythology was at odds with medieval Christian views of morality and propriety. While some of Freya's stories involved love affairs, many more told of how she avoided unwanted marriages. In one famous story, the question of Freya's marriage came up when the gods sought to rebuild Asgard's walls after the Ace of Veneer War. A builder offered to do the work by himself, with only a horse to help him. What's more, he guaranteed that he could complete the job in a year's time. The price he asked for was Freya's hand in marriage. While the gods balked at the offer, Loki convinced them to reconsider. The task would be impossible, he reasoned, but the builder would still complete a year's worth of work. Freya was at no risk, but the gods could get a good amount of work done for free. When the builder began the project, however, it was clear that he was no ordinary mason. He was actually a hill giant whose immense strength allowed him to tirelessly do the work of several men. With the work nearly completed, the gods commanded Loki to save Freya from marrying a giant because of his scheme. He ended up taking the form of a mare to lure away the giant's horse. The hill giant completed all but a few stones in the wall's construction. Freya was spared and Asgard's walls built at no cost but Loki ended up giving birth to Sleipnir while still in the form of a female horse. In another story, a giant named Thrym stole Mjolnir, Thor's famous hammer. He demanded Freya in exchange for the powerful weapon. Freya would not concede to such an arrangement, but the gods could not allow an enemy to possibly use a great tool against them. Once again, a plan had to be devised to save Freya from the fate of marrying a giant. Heimdall suggested that Thor disguise himself as Freya to steal Mjolnir back. He would be welcomed into Thrym's hall and be able to take the hammer at the first opportunity. Thor was against the idea, but Loki offered to accompany him as a maid. Disguising themselves as women was preferable to Freya being sold to a giant. Thor and Loki went to Thrym's hall disguised as women. They wore heavy veils to hide their bearded faces. Thrym welcomed them, but soon had doubts. 
He grew suspicious when the veiled goddess ate several whole animals and drained three casks of mead at the wedding feast. Loki told him that Freya had been so nervous that she had not eaten for several days. Her hunger was as a result of her fast. When the giant saw Thor's eyes glaring at him, Loki again explained it away by saying that Freya had not been able to sleep either. The intense glare was due to exhaustion, not fury. Finally, the feast ended, and Thrym ordered the hammer to be brought out to sanctify the marriage. As soon as it was within reach, Thor grabbed Mjolnir and killed all the giants who had come to the feast, including Thrym. Freya did eventually marry, however. Her marriage was to a god named Oda. I hope you liked the video about Freya, the goddess of beauty, fertility, fate and magic in Norse mythology. And if you really enjoy it, please support the channel through the super thanks button found under the video. Till next time, yours truly, Mythos the Historian.